Why was Spain neutral in World War II? The role of Spain in the Second World War fluctuated between a stance of full neutrality and one of non-belligerence. Neutrality refers strictly to the state of not supporting or helping either side in a conflict, disagreement, etc. Whereas non-belligerence more loosely describes a nation or person that is not engaged in a war or conflict. As an ideological supporter of both Germany and Italy, Spain did not turn a complete blind eye on the events of World War II, despite hiding their own freshly resolved civil war to explain their lack of direct participation. Ending the same year that World War II began, which was in 1939, the Spanish Civil War had previously erupted in 1936 between the most liberal republic government and the conservative nationalist rebellion. On one side, the republic touted military aid from the Soviet Union, as well as support from Mexico. The United Kingdom, the United States, and France may have maintained a policy of non-intervention during the conflict, but they all continued to recognize the Republic as the government of Spain, and some volunteer citizens chose to become involved in the war regardless of their nation's stance. Alternatively, both Italy and Germany chose to assist the nationalists, who were led by General Francisco Franco, even supplying the rebellion with aid in the form of tanks. Speaking of tanks, we are very happy to announce that this video is sponsored by World of Tanks. World of Tanks is an amazing free-to-play military combat online game. As a player since 2012, I can truly recommend this game to others. World of Tanks is not only entertaining and captivating, but also history-related. Imagine being able to see or to command a World War II tank. Even though most of us can't do that, World of Tanks is offering you this experience through its incredible arsenal of hundreds of historically accurate playable tanks. You can play with tank models that were used before, during, and after World War II, but there are also prototype vehicles that were planned, but were not mass-produced. Choose your favorite nation and fight to research better tanks in a community of millions of players. Click on the link in the description to download the game and use the code TANKTASTIC. By registering for the first time with this code, you will gain a Soviet T-127 premium tank, 500 gold, and 7 days of premium time. See you on the battlefield, Commander. Franco became the new dictator of the nation, and was swiftly faced with the task of deciding the country's place in a new world war. Torn between his want to appease the Allies, while sharing many principal beliefs with the Axis powers, Franco chose to take a relatively neutral position, but leaned more in the direction of passive non-belligerence. Initially, Franco had seriously considered the possibility of joining the action especially after the fall of France, choosing to meet with German officials at Hende in October of 1940. The meeting ultimately failed, as neither autocrat could come to an agreeable position, and the entire point of the summit had been to resolve previous disputes over the terms of which Spain was willing to fully align with the Axis forces. After seven hours of discussion, the Germans were still unsatisfied with Franco's demands for the obtainment of certain French territories, as well as relief from Germany, economically and otherwise, to curb the aftermath of the Spanish Civil War. Memorably, after the unsuccessful rendezvous, the German leader said to Benito Mussolini, I prefer to have three or four of my own teeth pulled out, than speak to that man again. Referring, of course, to General Franco of Spain. Nonetheless, the Germans decided to once again reach out to Franco, by means of a letter, attempting to rather aggressively persuade the Spanish dictator to allow German passage through his country in order to invade the British possession of Gibraltar. Adamantly opposed to this idea, Franco refused, stating that the United Kingdom posed a direct threat to Spain and their colonies, and that he would not agree to such a risk unless Britain was at the point of collapse. 
Even though Germany tried in a second letter to bribe his unwilling ally with an offer of grain and other supplies, Franco held his ground. Further off-put by the recent defeats of the Italian troops, by the British forces in Serenica and Italian East Africa, the Germans had hoped that the Italians would persuade the Spanish better. Franco met privately with Mussolini in Bordighera on February 12, 1941. While there was hope that the Italian leader could finally convince the Spaniard to officially enter the war, this plan yet again failed. After these repeat efforts to come to some sort of agreement, all that remained was merely the Protocol of Hende, which Franco stated in a letter was, in this respect, extremely vague, and your excellency remembers the conditions today so changed, of this vagueness and lack of preciseness. Carrying on to even add that, the protocol then existing must at the present be considered outmoded. Essentially, Germany was left with nothing in terms of a true ally, and Spain remained at the most non-belligerent. The only military support the Axis powers could even remotely credit to Spain came in the form of volunteers, who decided to enter the war on their own. The side that each Spanish volunteer chose seemed to be closely linked to the faction they had fought for during the Civil War, with many nationalists joining the Axis troops and various Republicans siding with the Allies. Even so, of the 18,000 plus nationalist men choosing to support the Axis forces, all of them had to accept terms in which they would only fight against the Soviet Union on the Eastern Front as opposed to facing the Western Allies. This allowed Franco to give an inkling of support to Germany without causing an obvious increase of tensions with the Allied side. Either way, the Spanish volunteers made up the Blue Division, which trained in Germany and combined with the Blue Squadron of the Air Force, totaled around 18,100 men. By the Potsdam Conference in July of 1945, Russia's Joseph Stalin was furious with Franco's allowance for these volunteers to enter the war and made clear his wish to retaliate. Winston Churchill of the United Kingdom and Harry Truman of the United States both refused the proposal for an Allied invasion of Spain and convinced Stalin to instead compromise on a complete trade embargo against the country. This embargo was only the start of the consequences the Spanish would suffer for their involvement with the Axis side. Even though the Spanish ruler eventually seemed to shift his favor toward the Allies, as Germany's inevitable defeat became progressively clear, he was unable to escape ramifications brought on by his earlier decisions. Before his death in the spring of 1945, American President Franklin Roosevelt had promised Spain that they would not be punished by the United Nations for their mistakes at the start of the war. But unfortunately for the Spaniards, the next president held a stronger grudge. Spain was unable to join the United Nations until 1955, and multiple countries had gone as far as to withdraw their ambassadors from Spain. Albeit, during the war, the Allies hadn't necessarily played fair in terms of their treatment of Spain either. Knowing that the country was still suffering from the effects of the Civil War, and access to trade and imports was crucial, the Allied countries decided to use this struggle to their advantage. Both the United Kingdom and the United States chose to limit Spain's access to oil, and attempted to utilize economic and trade incentives to force Franco's hand and keep his nation on the sidelines. Conveniently, Spain still had a strong alliance with Portugal and was able to obtain the necessary food supplies to prevent a full-out famine. Furthermore, despite lacking economic stability and other necessities, Spain was still able to provide Germany with supplies such as tungsten ore from German-owned mines within the country. The Allies attempted to purchase as much of the metal as they could while working on diplomatic negotiations with Spain. But Franco continued to provide Germany with the tungsten ore until late summer of 1944. Still in May of 2013, 
Documents were revealed that show MI6 had spent a modern equivalent of over $200 million in a ploy to keep Spain from joining the Axis powers. Ultimately, with all the endeavors by the Allies to box Spain into a permanent place of neutrality, it comes as no surprise that Franco began to lean toward the Western nations, in spite of unavoidable sanctions to come. Thankfully for Spain though, when the Cold War began in 1947, the United States softened its stance towards the country, and viewed them no longer as a menace, but as an ally against the Communists. Although the wavering and weakly established position of Franco's Spain during World War II proved to be an imperfect approach, it was not entirely a deeply flawed one. The consequences, of course, may have been more than what complete neutrality would have entailed, but by keeping relatively positive relations on both sides and yet never truly entering the war, Spain was able to at least prevent its own total downfall. Between the Civil War and World War, the country would have been all but demolished had Franco made the decision to truly become an Axis power. Assisted further by a stroke of pure luck, geographical positioning may have also saved Spain from needing to enter the war, as every country spanning between allied Russia and Axis Germany either chose to join or was unwillingly compelled to enter the war with full participation. Being outside of the main concentrated map of the war, Spain was able to return unscathed by any bombings or invasions in the form of collateral damage. We want to thank you so much for watching this video, and to express our gratitude to our very generous supporters on Patreon. If you like our videos, consider supporting the channel by clicking the link in the description. Also don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button to be notified first when a new video is ready for you. See you next time.